Mastering Assistant has landed in Logic Pro for iPad and it is excellent. In this video, I'll go over how it works and hear how it compares to other iPad mastering options. Logic Pro for iPad's Mastering Assistant is actually quite simple to use. The developers have done a great job of keeping the interface really clean and straightforward, while giving users access to some pretty powerful controls. Having said that, like any form of mastering, adding this to your project won't fix a wonky mix. Apple say this themselves in the recommended mastering workflow. Finish mixing your project, making sure everything sounds balanced and dynamically consistent and has enough headroom so that your project doesn't clip. Think of it as adding a mastering cherry onto your already deliciously mixed project. I'm going to have fun editing that in later, aren't I? There are a couple of different ways to add Mastering Assistant to your project. To add it from the plugins area, tap the plugins button at the bottom of your screen to open the plugins area. Then tap the output button to view the stereo output channel strip. Then tap the magic wand to add the Mastering Assistant. Or to add the Mastering Assistant from the mixer, tap the mixer button at the bottom of your screen to view the mixer channel strips. Then tap the magic wand on the stereo output channel strip to add the Mastering Assistant. Once you tap the magic wand, the Mastering Assistant will analyze your project and automatically master it. Now, you can just leave things there if you want. It actually does a really good job of automatically applying different parameters but you can dive in and tweak your master a fair bit if you want to. The Mastering Assistant is split into five sections. The Character Menu, EQ, Dynamics, Spreads, and some additional controls here. The Character Menu allows you to choose the character of the processing applied to your project. The Clean preset offers a transparent and punchy result, which is good for EDM and acoustic music. The valve preset simulates a processing chain using tubes to deliver a deep low end, making it a great option for hip hop. The punch preset provides an aggressive sound with emphasis on the mid range, ideally suited for rock music. And the transparent preset is the all rounder that's suitable for most genres of music. The Mastering Assistant applies EQ correction, which you can see here. And you can increase or decrease the amount of auto EQ applied by dragging the slider up and down. You can also tap this custom EQ button and then further adjust the auto EQ by dragging these points up or down. Over in the dynamic section, the loudness knob unsurprisingly changes the loudness of your processed audio. 
When the loudness knob is in its centre position, the output typically registers at around minus 14 luffs. That's around about where you want to be for streaming services if you plan to release your exported project on Spotify or Apple Music, etc. You can of course increase or decrease this if you want to, but note that the true peak or absolute highest level your signal can reach is restricted to minus 1 dBFS, which meets the requirement for streaming platforms. This acts kinda like a brick wall limiter, so bear that in mind if you do plan on cranking this knob up. You can add some extra crispiness and saturation to your mix with the Excite button. And the Luffs meter allows you to monitor exactly how close to that minus 14 dB level, if that's what you're going for, your project is at. In the spread section, the width knob increases or decreases the width of your mix. Keep an eye on the correlation meter though, as if you push your mix too wide, you may run into some phasing issues, which means your song will sound a bit weird on mono outputs. As a general rule of thumb, you want this meter to stay between 0 and plus 1. Below that, you can have the Mastering Assistant re-analyse your project, which is handy if you've been tweaking your mix while using it. You can bypass the Assistant, and activate Loudness Compensation here. This allows you to match the volume of the processed audio with that of the original. Do make sure to turn it off before exporting your project though. Right, that's how Logic Pro for iPad's Mastering Assistant works. How does it compare to other iPad mastering options? Clevgren's Grand Finale is a multi-effect mastering plugin designed for finalising complete mixes, stems, buses or individual audio tracks. It costs around $15-ish on the App Store. BandLab's Mastering is a no-frills preset-based service that's completely free and allows users to select from four different mastering styles. I've exported an uncompressed version of my project, which I'll then load up in Logic Pro, Grand Finale and BandLab, then see how similar mastering presets compare.
I mentioned this in my Logic Pro for iPad update video, link below the like button if you haven't seen it yet. But the thing that I really like about this new mastering assistant is how subtle it is. It doesn't oversaturate or artificially inflate the volume to make you think that something incredible is happening. And I think that because of that, it comes out on top in this comparison. But please leave a comment below and let me know which mastering service app thing sounds best to you. All right then, subscribe below so you don't miss out on any new Logic Pro for iPad videos. And if you could give that like button a click or tap on your way past, I'd really appreciate it. Bye for now.